Spock test it, the next generation. All right, not that Spock, but still. Um, <coughs> it's a testing framework specifically for JVM languages. So JUnit, TestNG, you've probably heard of them. Hopefully you're using at least one of them if you're doing anything with Java. Uh, but I'm going to show you that Spock has some nice advantages over either one of those. So do we really need another testing framework? Seriously, do we need another one? Yes, yes we do. Uh, but it's actually been around since 2009, so it's not like really new, it's just sort of new to you. So, <laughs> all right, so how Spock measures up. So normally we said we've got unit testing, so we know about that, and then we get into our holy wars. Oh, mocking. All right, my mocking framework's better than your mocking framework. And then I pull in power mock, because I need it. And then, <laughs> and then I probably won't get to any of the behavior uh, driven design, unfortunately, but they're in the uh, slide deck. Spock actually <coughs> covers all of these in one package. All right, so quickly, uh, JUnit, Spock, these are just the terms before setup. I'm not really gonna go over this too much because you can look at that. I'm gonna show you an example. This is really trivial. Uh, JUnit over here on the left, you've got your setup block, you've got your test, and then somebody wrote you know, a nice thing. Spock, you've got a few keywords like def you may not know. And, interesting method name which is actually valid and then expecting a result. Uh, what you don't know is that both of these tests are primed to fail. Uh, we may be able to see it to this dude before but I'm expecting five. So I go to the next thing and I get my usual J unit test. You know I expected five but I got four and nobody ever puts a nice thing like that in there. So this is a trivial example it's going to say something like yeah right somebody had to fill it in because there's a string there. But these are things called Groovy asserts. Actually, Spock invented them first. They ported it back into the Groovy language. So it actually shows you intermediate results from any kind of assertion comparison so that you can break it out going, where's the addition? This is really good when you have like combinations of things that are all combining into a final result. This is trivial. I'm just showing it to you because it's easy. Otherwise, you take up too much space on the screen. All right, cooler stuff. Parameterization. Uh, there's this little keyword called unroll, and then we've got this funny looking method name. And Spock makes use of Groovy, and Groovy lets you put just about anything into a method name, except dollar signs, but that's a JVM limitation. So what's actually happening here is this looks very similar to the previous one, but well, well, wait a second, where, where did A, B, and C get defined as variables? Well, actually they're being defined down here. And this tabular format, the, the double, uh, the double bars, that's just frosting. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You put single pipes there, double pipes. It's just sort of a way to demark uh, differential things, like C as a result. So 2 plus 2, 4, 2, 2, 5. OK. So what does this look like when I move forward here? Ah, I get a test result that passes for the 2 plus 2 equals 4, and I get a failure on the 2 plus 2 equals 5. This is the actual method name in all your JUnit reports. So instead of just 2 plus 2 equals 4 and 2 plus 2 equals 5, you can actually spit out the exact parameters as the method names in your reports versus simple test. Simple test 2, simple test 3, or whatever you try to come up with. <laughs> Interesting name for all those variations. Uh, and the only difference here is like A and B and C are filled in. You still get the same false result. So that's kind of cool stuff. And then, all right, I told you I was going to talk about mocking. So. I'll tell you quickly the difference between mocking and stubbing. Uh, mocking is where you're actually trying to check behavior that somebody's calling into something. Stubbing is giving you back results. You're actually interacting with the objects in a more um, manner where steps actually, where the results that come back matter. So in this case, we're mocking it and we want to say, okay, I want to say that calculator add has been called with two and two. Pretty simple. That's the syntax. One times calculator has been called with that. All right, but how do I know the calculator wasn't called with all kinds of other garbage? All right, I'm going to say I want anything else to never be called. And this is very convenient when you're dealing with certain libraries, especially when you're doing threading things, where you say, if you're doing something over here, I want to make sure you're not calling any of this other stuff. And what's cool is this method name there, that can be a regular expression. I didn't even show that there, but you, it's really looking for things at runtime. All right, on to stubbing. 
So I've got a stub calculator. So this says when I do the add operation on my calculator, return the result four for at least two and two as inputs. So we've got two and two down our little table down below. Again, you can see there's some missing things. This is a little bit of groovy stuff going on here. All right, well, if you hand me anything else, meaning the little underscores are basically placeholders for, I don't care what you're giving me, bind the first one to X and the second one to Y, just because this is actually what's called a closure in Groovy. So all those people that like uh, functional programming languages, that's in use in here. So it just says that first variable becomes X, that second variable becomes Y, and as a return result, return statement is actually optional in Groovy. Give me back x plus y, which just happens to be what our calculator does. But I mean, it could be something much more complex. But this allows us to have, for a certain input, a specific result. And then for a different set of inputs, completely different results that are tailored to just kind of like handle the case where I don't really care, but I need to give you back something that's valid. All right. So if I really felt like it, I could pop over here and there's this interactive Spock tester. And I might get around to this because I'm chewing this right through. And the source code is actually up on GitHub for what I just put together for these uh, cases because, well, I had to test them out, of course. Um, they're not exactly the same, uh, but they have all the context. I kind of cut and pasted sections of the thing. So all the contents there is just sort of more much. So I'm going to jump to my backup slides because I can. <laughs> so who here does uh, behavior-driven design or actually knows anything about that? Yeah, anybody besides Crypt? <laughs> Good, a couple of hands. All right, so there's this classic example. You get this scenario. Multiple givens, given one thing and another thing and yet another thing. When I open my eyes and I see something, but I don't see something else. That's actually what, if, you, if your tool can handle that, that's a great thing. This thing on the right, that is actual valid Spock code. You can write that and it's not going to blow up. Now, you're not actually testing anything because these are sort of uh, labeled placeholders, but uh, it's uh, more interesting when you combine it and actually put it in with something. So you can give somebody the task of writing your test cases and they can sit there and say, okay, well, give it a new calculator and nothing is done to the calculator before addition. You know, when adding two values together, then the result is the expected sum. Pretty simple, but basically, you can have somebody who doesn't know how to necessarily derive the tests into their lower level forms, put it right inside of your uh, test code, not in a separate one that's in its own thing, you've got to map it down in. You write it right in there, and then you should start filling in the rest of it. Uh, this is pretty powerful. I will say, it doesn't have all the awesome testing result frameworks like Cucumber and whatnot have for you know, generating managerial reports. But uh, hey, what's easier than having the analyst who knows what they want to test write in plain text for you to just kind of fill out and flush out? So that is it for that. Also, but, but my IDE, it, it never works in my IDE. No tools never work in there. Well, Spock actually uses a built-in test runner called <coughs> Sputnik that makes it transparent to most Java IDEs and build tools. There's only a couple of cases where the unroll, where you actually try to use that. There's some IDEs that under certain circumstances, they don't like the fact that there are more unit tests that materialize than it can derive from the code base. It's like, I didn't see it. Why are there 17 tests when I see only three? I don't understand. So that's the only case where it uh, doesn't actually work. So if I can jump onto the internet quickly. Here we go. So this is actual spot code right here. In fact, if I run the script, it's going to fail immediately. You guys probably cannot see that. So let's bump up the font size with the control sequences that don't work. Command, Command, plus. Plus. Command plus. There we go. Command plus. And we'll bump up the size here. And I made it too big. Fine. We see this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so essentially, this is whatever you think it is. Um, it's basically the same kind of code that I was utilizing before, but you're just popping right out there on the web, and you can cut and paste stuff right into here. Great thing about Groovy is you can implement the class right above it somewhere, so you're just trying to try something out and show people how to use this. So this is, this is really live. I mean, I can sit here and fix it, and then when I run it, it's going to go and say, 
Yep, sure. So it's printing it out. If you guys want to play with this, please go ahead and do it. Um, it's not here yet, uh, but there's a stock book coming out in the next couple of months, probably three or four months from now. It's currently in uh, Manning's uh, Early Access. Uh, they're going to have a lot of things there. So if you want to try and play around with it, you can get access to at least the, uh, the examples. And I enjoy using the clock. It's a lot of fun to write test cases where it isn't more work than writing the actual code itself. You write a little bit of code and it does a lot of stuff and it forces you to get your stuff that you need to be solid actually tested versus, nah, that's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I have on Spock. So we can meet Any up questions for Spencer? Okay. Is this on our networks? Yes. The, the latest, greatest version is not, meaning the 1.0 that came out in March, but the older variants are, and it's, it's in progress of getting onto the networks. So, any day now for the, for the latest. And you're not losing much between uh, the, the previous version from a couple of years ago and the latest version that exists right now. Uh, essentially, it is made a little bit nicer to work with Maven. And there are a couple of mocking capabilities that are that are built in that let you do certain techniques that you couldn't do before. And as Chris asked me when he wasn't here, right? I mean, earlier he asked about spying, and yes, it supports that capability as well. I don't know if we have any more time for anything. I don't want to take away from the Dominican Republic. Any any other questions? One more. Well, awesome. Thank you, Spencer.